This is Alan Salmon, and I'm pleased that so many of you are with me for this short mini webinar. A little bit of admin before we get started. My good friend Marilyn Benninger is backing me up today, and she is your go-to person for technical issues and for questions. Your microphones are muted for obvious reasons. In terms of notes, be aware that within approximately 10 days from today, you're going to receive a package from Marilyn and it will include the recording, my teaching notes, my teaching files, the answers to all of the questions, and your CPD certificate. In terms of questions, you ask them through the chat window. And after the webinar is over, Marilyn will collect them all, send them to us, we will give her the answers back, and she will include both the questions and the answers in your package. When it comes to your CPD certificates, four times today, Marilyn is going to stop each of us and put up a polling question. That's a multiple choice question. You don't have to get the answer right, but you do have to select one of the possible answers and click on submit. If you're recorded as answering at least three of the four questions, you will get a CPD certificate for one verifiable hour. If you don't, it'll be one non-verifiable. And now on to the topic for today, which of course is PowerPoint. My second favorite program, and I've had a lot of fun doing PowerPoint presentations in the last many years. And I wanna share some of that experience with you today. And I'm going to start by playing a very short video that really summarizes the foundation of what should be in every PowerPoint presentation. So sit back and relax and see what you think of this. Presentations are a powerful communication medium. For more than 20 years, Duarte has developed presentations to launch products, align employees, increase company value, and propel global causes. Along the way, we have discovered five simple rules for creating world-changing presentations. The first rule is, treat your audience as king. Your audience deserves to be treated like royalty. Design a presentation that meets their needs and not just yours. Audiences want to know what you can do for them, why they should adopt your view, and what are the steps they need to follow to take action. Give them those things in a clear, easily understandable way, and you will undoubtedly find favor with the king. The second rule is spread ideas and move people. Your audience didn't show up to read your 60-page on-screen dissertation. They are there to see you, to be inspired by your message and witness the quality of your thought. You are not giving your presentation to have another meeting. You are there to convey meaning. So consider including imagery that powerfully illustrates your point. Sometimes moving images can inspire in a way that static slides cannot. A slow moving animation creates a sense of nostalgia. A sequential build adds a sense of suspense. And a thought-provoking video moves your audience in a way that can not only change minds, but hearts. The next rule is, help them see what you're saying. Now, half of the people in your audience are verbal thinkers and the other half are visual. Combining minimal text with meaningful visuals means that you will reach everyone. Brainstorm graphics that will effectively communicate your message and then replace those words with a picture, a chart, or a diagram. Then apply a consistent treatment to your graphics to give your whole presentation a unified look so that your audience is attracted to rather than distracted from your message. Rule number four, practice design, not decoration. As tempting as it is to fill your slides with stuff, Often, de-decorating is the best policy. Any writer or designer will tell you that 90% of the creative process is destructive. Do you have one main point?
consider putting just one word on the slide by itself. You want them to remember a few items? Then don't show everything at once. Instead, show one item at a time. Do you have a picture that accurately expresses your idea? Scale that picture so it fills the slide. Do you know a quote that says it all? Then let it say it and remove everything else. The last rule is cultivate healthy relationships with your slides and your audience. Letting go is hard, we know, but don't hide behind your slides. Breaking your dependence on your slides can do a world of good for your relationship with the audience. Reduce the amount of text to just a few words and put the rest of the information in the notes and then practice, practice, practice. Thinking of your slides as digital scenery allows you to connect eye to eye with your audience in a meaningful way. So, those are the rules, but the question remains, why go to all this trouble? Why not do it the way you're used to? The answer is simple, because everyone else does it that way too, and you need to stand apart and be different. When you apply these rules and keep the audience's needs top of mind, your presentation will not only hold their attention, but also change the world. Well, at least you I hope you enjoyed that, and I will be applying some of those rules in what I do with you today. And I give you notice that early in 2019, I will be doing session three of PowerPoint. And in that, I will focus on presenting and not building, but that's to come. So let's move to my first slide, which is blank. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I had to do a totally new presentation. I got a library of probably a couple of hundred slides, but nothing fit. So did I start from scratch? No. I went up to home and I went to new. And there are a whole bunch of templates. So we'll go to business. And just what? We've got seven slides. And that's a framework for what you might want to do. Bullet slides, et cetera, et cetera. So, as I said, two weeks ago, I went and found a template. There's th literally thousands of them out there that was pretty close to what I wanted, and then I modified it. In fact, if I have time, I will show you that. So the next thing I wanna to touch on is this, and the presentation doesn't matter. What matters is this. I'm going to go to the View tab, and I'm gonna go over here to Slide Master. Now, why am I going here? because this is the foundation for my PowerPoint presentation. And there's various types of slide masters, bullets, etc., etc. But let's focus here and let's click in here. And when I go to home, you'll notice it's Calibra 44. When I go here, it's Calibra 32. I go down to the footer and it's 12. So what happens if I don't like that? Well, I just go in and change the text size or the text type. And then all of my PowerPoint presentations from then will have my new slide master. I want to tell you that I'm pretty lazy, so I've gone with the default here. The next thing here, when I go back to view though, is this. There will be times when I'm gonna have a handout. Usually today, that's a PDF copy of my presentation, but once in a while, some of my clients print it out. So if I go to the handout master, I can define the header and I can define how many slides per page. So that'll print them one up, 
two up, three up, and so on. Pretty useful. So all of that control of the foundation is found under the View tab. Once in a while, I'll start out not in PowerPoint, but in Word. And I create what's called an outline. My headers, my subheaders, and my bullets, and so on. And if I've done that, and I have done that, then I can pull them into PowerPoint. Like when I first saw this, I thought it was amazing. And the way I do that is to go to new slide right here. And I don't want any of these. I want slides from an outline. And there's my outline in Word. And I click on insert. And bingo, I got a presentation. Now, I've got a problem with my Word right now, so I'm not going to open the document in Word, but I'm going to do it this way. If you saw the Word document, you would see it as a two-page document. And here's where styles come in. In Word, that is a heading one. That is a heading two. And when PowerPoint brings it in, every heading one is a new slide. Every heading two is a bullets. I've probably done a couple of those in the last year when I was working on something new. So something to tuck away in the back of your mind going forward. And then one of my favorite things, and that is this. The presentation doesn't matter. What matters is that I'm going to go up here and click on transitions. Now, what are transitions? That's the movement between slides. Now, there is no transition on this PowerPoint presentation. And watch what happens. Can you see the jump as the slide, I move through the slide? Well, I have done presentations, usually about an hour and a half, where I had almost 200 slides. And that jump is irritating to people. So how do we deal with that? Well, we deal with it with what are called animations. So up here, we've got a pile of transitions. Let's look at one of them. And that's only a partial list because if we go down, now we got a second set. And I'll do one more because now here we've got a third set. And if we go back to my early days of creating a PowerPoint presentation, I went hog wild on transitions. And then if we take you back to the video, remember, keep it simple. So right now, I only use one transition in every PowerPoint, and that is fade. And not only do I select it, I go over here, apply to all. So let's watch it now. You see how non-jarring that is? And then let's do the second piece, and that is animations. So we'll go to the animation tab, and we'll select that. And we got a bunch of animations. And once again, you can get carried away. So my policy now is that I don't do animations on a title slide, 
but I do do animations down here on this slide. Why? Because when I trans transition from this slide to this slide, all of my bullets are there. And if you're like me, I tend to, to read ahead. So to deal with that, I go here and I make this a fly in. And the same thing here. And I know you're thinking, why does he have to do it four times? Well, the simple answer is if I didn't, they'd all fly in together. Now that you notice that they flew in from the bottom. If I select this and go up here to the animation pane and right mouse click on this first one, I got a bunch of different ways of bringing it in when I go to the effect options. So my, I love bringing it in from the top left. And I want a smooth start, but let's do a bounce end just for laughs. So let's go here now and let's go presentation mode and watch. Yakety, yakety, yak. First bullet. By the way, I don't use that bounce. So it comes in clean. So that's two of my favorite things, transitions and animations. Now, multiple PowerPoints based on the same show. And this is a real PowerPoint. And if any of you are at the opening for our tech tour, Conning Technology Seminar Series, you'll know it always starts with about a three-minute introduction. And I've reduced it to only 41 slides. And if we look at it, going down, here's our partners. And here's this. Well, that worked on November the 2nd when we were in Vancouver, but we were in 13 other cities. So this slide and the... Uh, lineup slide needed to be changed every day. About 15 years ago, the way I would do this is create the master and then create 14 different PowerPoint presentations with the correct slides in it. And then I got smart and figured out how to do one with 14 or 13 variations. So in my master, and let me go down a little bit farther, You'll notice when I get down here that I've got all the slides. That's in my master. Let's go to the slideshow tab and let's go to custom slideshow and custom shows. And I don't want Halifax, so I'm going to remove it. So notice that I have a custom show called Moncton, based on the master. Let's run through it. Whoops, there we go. There's Moncton. And it's the end. So where did all of the other slides go? Well, that's the purpose for a custom show. So let's build one. Let's copy it. Let's edit it. Let's change this to Halifax. Now, in this deck, I've got all of the slides. 
in this deck, I've got all the slides that I want to show for Halifax. But we need to get Halifax over there. So where is Halifax? There it is. So I select it, and I click on Add. And it puts it at the bottom of the Halifax deck. Well, I don't want it there. I want it there, and I'm going to remove Moncton. And I'm going to click on OK. And now I'm going to show Halifax. And there we go. So when I do this, as I do in September every year, I create one master, and then I go here and create 13 custom shows. And by the way, if I change any of these slides up here, it automatically flows through to all of my other slides. I'm going to wrap up with a couple of tips. By the way, in case uh, you're really starting out, down here in the, in the toolbar, I have an icon called the presenter view. And I could get at it through the ribbon, but I don't. And I move, by the way, if you have two monitors, as I do, the presentation is on monitor one. On monitor two, I see this plus the next slide, which is helpful. And I can move around in many ways. So I'm putting the down arrow. I'm hitting the letter N. I'm hitting the space bar. I'm hitting P. And then once in a while, I'm going to make this happen. And no, I didn't lose the presentation. And this, this is, I will expand on this in session three. When you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, people are looking at the screen and listening to you. And there are times when I want them to focus on me. So I blank the screen. And how do I do that? With the letter B. So that's a little bit of presentations, and I want to wrap up for those of you that are on 2016 with this. And you can't do that in 2013, 10, and 7. Well, there's a title slide. It looks pretty nice. But if I go to Design tab, way over at the far right, I now have a tab called Design Ideas. And I click on it. And now, how do I want it to look? Now, this doesn't always work for all the slides. But when it does, it's a really cool way. So I like that. And on that note, Marilyn, I am done. We need to do the last uh, polling question, please. Absolutely. Thank you, Alan. Um, folks, I'm going to launch this poll for you. It's about Excel and lookups. And while you're answering that, maybe you'll hear the banging in the background. That's me banging on my head for yet another tip I picked up from Alan. I didn't know about custom slideshows, Alan, so that's going to save me a lot of time next year on the Accounting Technology Seminar. Thanks for sharing that. Nice, easy question. We're already at 90%. Thanks for your responses, folks. I'm going to be counting you down from 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Well, of course, this is a lead-in to my first session in December, so we'll tackle that there. Marilyn, it's time to do a handoff to Kinga. Absolutely. Let me just hide this. And I'm going to change the presenter to you, Kinga. You're unmuted. We see your screen, Kinga. 
All right. Can we see my screen and can we hear me? You're good to go on both fronts. Awesome. Well, welcome. It's nice to get a chance to chat with everybody. My name is Kinga. I'm from Payment Evolution. We are an online payroll provider um, offering payroll, payments, and benefits to small businesses all across Canada. So I'm here to talk to you about uh, frequent advisory versus year-end accounting. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I believe I have about 15 minutes. Um, and yeah, I'm excited to kind of show you what payroll can do to help you grow your business. And if my PowerPoint would work, we would go to the next slide. There we are. So today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Payment Evolution. Uh, then we're going to go into how building relationships can help you grow your business, offering payroll as a service. I'll show you a little bit on how to run payroll. I have a couple slides, where so I won't go into a full demo. <laughs> and then I'll tell you a little bit more about how Payment Evolution can help. So a little bit about Payment Evolution. We are self-proclaimed Canada's most loved payroll provider, but we have heard it from a lot of our clients. As a matter of fact, we have over 20,000 clients here in Canada. We're a little bit over 10 years old, um, which, I mean, we're old, but we're not that old. Uh, and we do about a billion dollars um, in funds, in, moving, in money movement uh, a year. Our approach is to be motivated by innovation, and we take a team approach. So everybody in office works together. We're constantly collaborating amongst each other, as well as with our partners, such as Zero, Intuit, Sage, Cashew, FreshBooks, T-Sheets, and, of course, K2E. Oh, it doesn't like going to the next slide for me. So we're going to have, have a couple poll questions. First one is, how often do you communicate with your clients? Marilyn, if you wouldn't mind. My pleasure. So folks who have changed the screen, nice, easy yes or no question for you. Sorry, King of the question I have for you is currently offering payroll as a service to your clients. That's a yes, no. I think the next one is about communication. So we're right there, folks. You're nice, easy question. We're at 90% already. I'll be counting you down from five, four, three, two, and one. Thanks, everyone, for your responses. Do you see the results there, Kinga, or do I need to share them with you? I do. I can see it on um, my audience view screen. So, yeah. whoa, 67 percent of you do not offer payroll as a service to your clients. That's very shocking to hear, but that 33 of you, good job. <laughs> so we have one more poll that we're just going to throw out right now, get them all out of the way. Why not? So yeah, how we'll do, yeah, yeah, we'll do it a little bit later so that we can do a verified PD. So oh, we'll do okay. it maybe towards the end All of your presentation right. well, after you've given them some great then. <laughs> <laughs> No problem. Oh. All right. My screen keeps changing. So building relationships is kind of something we're first going to talk about. Um, I know a lot of you, whether you're looking for business for yourself, um, whether you're looking for a contractor or someone, you ask your friends, right? You ask your friends if they know someone, if they know whether it's someone within their family, if someone they worked with in the past that, you know, did a really good job and they have a good relationship and most importantly, someone they trust. So the same thing applies when people are looking for an accountant or bookkeeper. They want to do business with those that, you know, that they know that they have you know, have real relationships with others. So they're going to ask for referrals. They're going to ask for people, people's opinions to see who they trust the most to help and trust them in their business. When it comes to their books, you know, people want to make sure that everything is done properly. The thing is, though, you know, I know I noticed with a lot of accountants and bookkeepers when it comes to stuff like billing and, you know, that, that monthly bill, it just kind of gets tough to explain it because they don't realize a lot of the work you do in the back end throughout that month. So we always say that payroll should actually be that front runner. And this is all going to tie in. I know it kind of seems like a weird segment, but it's all going to tie in. <laughs> um, bringing payroll to the front gives you that, that little extra something, that little something that's visible, almost 
something that you can actually communicate with your client with every month, something that you know shows them that monthly, not just value, because there's a lot of value in your work, but just something to keep in the forefront to show them, hey, I am working on your business every day or every so, some days, but here's what I'm billing you for monthly. So this helps you continue maintain that constant contact with your client and you're providing them with that monthly billable service you are there all the time instead of during year end we notice a lot of the time that accountants and bookkeepers are the busiest of course come you know january to april but why is that it is because the these clients or these new clients even they come to you at the year end, give you their shoebox, go, okay, I have done nothing all year. Here's all my work. Or I have done so and so all year. Help me fix all my errors because suddenly it's saying I owe X amount of money to the government and now I have no idea what to do. So you're there to help avoid those costly year end blunders and having payroll, a system in the process that helps avoid those payroll blunders come year end. And of course, this will help increase your business's revenue. If you have that additional feature, again, that visual feature that's there, you know, your clients know what they're paying you for right off the bat every month, right? And with payroll, it's so easy. It's so easy to run payroll and avoid those year-end blunders. It's super easy to maintain that relationship with your clients throughout the month because one you have to of course get the hours in and make sure that payroll um, is done properly and on time and you know that contact is maintained and payroll through payment evolution is done in as little as five easy steps so I'm going to show you those steps in a little bit we also have an easy to use online employee portal where employees can actually log in and view their pay slips and tax slips electronically and as I mentioned before we do have a lot of great partners to make uh, so that if your clients do have various accounting integrations that they use, such as you know Sage One, Cashew, QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop, even we are able to accommodate those clients. So within our payroll system, every accountant and bookkeeper has their own client portal. So as you can see here, I have a whole list of really really random company names <laughs> and client names. Um, and this is what it would look like for you. So you're able to actually view each client individually and you're able to go into each client individually. Another feature that we do have is the ability to have your client just simply log into their own account. They wouldn't see this whole portal, just their own account and run payroll for themselves. So it's as simple as clicking run payroll. You'll start your pay run. Um, before you even start, sorry, you're going to see uh, a graph showing you your previous pay runs and, you know, in case something looks a little bit wonky, like this one looks like they forgot to run payroll one day in there and run payroll twice one day. <laughs> um, but of course, yours will be a lot cleaner than this one. You'll then select your pay cycle. So if you have bi-weekly employees, monthly, semi-monthly, you know how those work, you're able to choose that one here. If you have clients on multiple or employees on multiple pay cycles within one run, you would, um, you know, run payroll for each pay cycle using the screen. We have the ability to run special off cycle pay runs and we have the ability to run manual reversals. So this is something that's only a feature within the accountant and bookkeeper version of our payroll. Ooh. Once you select a pay cycle, um, you would see this screen first, you would see your salaried employees, which I do wish upon everyone because it's easy as approving each employee. You would check off every checkbox on the left hand side and then you would approve the hours. If you have any additional earnings that you would want to add to the screen, you look at that add plus button on the far right side, you would click the plus button and you would add um, any additional earnings such as bonuses, sick leave, etc. Shortly after that, you would click on timesheets if you have any time-based employees. You're able to view them in two screens. You have the bulk and the um, daily view. So the daily view would show you basically seven days a week if they, if your clients simply want to input those hours or they just give you those hours, we'll do the calculation for you. If you want to put in total hours for the employee's timesheet, you're able to do that as well. 
you would then click on calculate where payment evolution would take all the general provincial and federal calculations, CPP, EI, if you're Quebec, we take care of that as well, QPP and QPIP, and we do the calculations. Once the calculation is done, you're in this review tab, which is a place where you could just kind of get another set of eyes and make sure that you know all your payments are done properly. You're able to go in depth with each employee by simply clicking on their name. You'll see any additional benefits or deductions uh, added or taken away in that tab. You're then able to go to the payments tab where you're able to choose how you want to pay your employees, whether it's by check or direct deposit. If it's direct deposit, it'll automatically default to the direct deposit option. Sometimes, you know, you want to get pay your employee that same day. You never know what can happen, pay a vacation, termination. You're able to pay them by check. We do have alternate funding options such as bill payment and wire transfer if you want to get those payments sent to the client employee a little sooner than expected. Once finalized, you're going to able, be able to see everyone's favorite screen, which is this pie chart. <laughs> um, it's a great little tool um, to know that, your one, your pay run is finalized, and you kind of get a good idea of where your money's going. So with the payments, remittances, again, we have Quebec and the pay runs just to kind of show you that we do work with Quebec, and the total amount you can expect for each employee and the total for remittances, et cetera. Here's a quick look at our online employee portal. It's great because employees can actually view their pay slips and tax slips electronically. They're able to print their own pay slips if they have to. So some a fun fact about payment evolution, we do offer T4s, T4As, RO1s, and ROEs free of charge. We do not submit them on the company's behalf, but we do generate them for you for easy submission. So the ROEs are in .blk format, ready to submit to Service Canada, and we create the T4s and T4 summaries. We they're also ready to be submitted to the CRA. When the employees receive their T4s in their online employee portal, you're, they're actually able to, should their accountant have tax cycle, submit their T4s straight to their accountant using tax cycle. So we have tons of integrations all over. But again, this is just kind of what the employee sees in their breakdown using their paycheck or online employee portal. So, the question that everyone's always asking is what does this cost me? So an accountant plan within Payment Evolution is $14 a month per client. There is a two client minimum, so you're looking at a $28 a month minimum. That is just per month, not per pay run, per month. If you wanna have your client set up for direct deposit, there's a one-time setup fee of $55. After that, you will not see that fee again unless there's a bank account change. The reason for that is that we send the information over to the bank and once they approve it, sign off on it, then we are able to activate direct deposit. It's 50 cents per employee per deposit and one debit fee of 50 cents. So if you have 10 employees, you're looking at $5.50 per pay run. If you would like payment evolution to submit remittances on the company's behalf, we do that as well. So that's another thing we take off your plate and it's $4 per remittance. So if they're monthly remitters, it's $4 a month. Quarterly, $4 a quarter. We do pull the funds each pay run to ensure that, you know, a payment is not missed during that remittance time back, way back, way back, way back when we did not pull the funds with the pay run. There were more problems and more errors in, you know, funding in funding that payment to the CRA. A lot of small businesses do have an issue with that. So we make sure that that is avoided, that we have the funds and that they are submitted to the CRA on time. So if you, any, if you have any questions or any information uh, that you would need from us, anything you, if you want to learn more, you can contact us at paymentevolution.com, prohelp at paymentevolution.com, or call us at 647-776-7600 at extension 1. We are more than happy to help. We work with hundreds and hundreds of accountant and bookkeepers just like you guys, and we have helped set a lot of businesses up for success. So I think that's my time. Thank you. Marilyn, that's back to you. Hey, Kinga, there was a question that came in, and if you wouldn't mind, if someone wanted to see the product in action, could they set up a, a time with your team in a webinar so that you could go through how to enter timesheets and really give a more in-depth overview? All right, that question got a little bit cut off while you were asking it. Is there any way... 
So if someone wanted to see the product in action, would they be able to set up a meeting with a member of your team to do a little bit more deeper Absolutely. dive? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's actually a couple ways to um, to view the product. So I'm always excited to, you know, meet with someone. I love doing live demos. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> but if you go to paymentevolution.com, we have a part on our website where you can actually play around with live demo. It doesn't have direct deposit attached, of course. Um, so bank, the bank option is never an option. But you are able to actually take a little, a bigger deep dive into the reporting. You could run your own payrolls. You could terminate employees. You can see exactly how this product works. So if you go to paymentevolution.com, click on login in the top right hand corner, and you can click this test using full demo account button in the bottom right here, and you'll go into a full demo. Great, thanks for that. Um, Steven wants to know where you're located. <laughs> we ahead, are Sarah. located in Toronto just by the airport and all our servers, if that was the question, sorry, for some reason your questions are cutting off to me, but if that was the question, they're located within Canada. That's perfect. So let's just run this last poll question. It's a good time to do that. And I'm gonna just put a poll question up for you folks. So we all know now, based on the advice from Payment Evolution, how important it is to stay in constant touch with your clients. Make sure that you're top of mind. But let's just get a sense of the folks that are on the call. How often do you communicate with your clients? Is it once per year? Less than six times a year? Could be monthly. Maybe more than 12 times a year. Or some of you might not even be in that situation just right now, but that's good for us to know. So folks, we're just coming up on 90%. Appreciate your feedback. I'm going to count you down from five, four, three, two, and one. I'm closing the poll now. I'm going to share those results. So about 45% or none of the above, but we've got a smattering of other folks there, Kinga, that do stay in touch with their clients. That's amazing. That is amazing to see. And it's encouraged, of course. Building that relationship, building that trust, it'll in the end get you more clients. It'll get more people referring you. And, you know, I saw there was that like small group of people that only had that yearly communication or less than six months. But, you know, you want to increase that to the monthly and maybe even semi-weekly, sometimes even weekly. But it's worth it for you in the end. And that's all billable time. <laughs> Great. Thanks very much, Kinga. We really appreciate your time today. Thank uh, you. For, Thank you, everyone, for taking the time. Fantastic. I'm going to, uh, I hear Alan, you're on the line. I'm going to just change I the certainly am. to you. Thanks, Kinga. I always learn something from these presentations. Before I finish up, I want to mention one thing. Marilyn has advised me that some of you could not see or hear the video. When you get the recording, I will strip out uh, what you thought you heard and put in the actual MP4 file. So if you play the recording, you'll be able to see that nice presentation. So we're just about done. I want to thank all of you for attending today. Kinga, thank you. Marilyn, thank you. And as usual, there will be a survey at the end, and I urge you to uh, complete it because we look at it uh, intensely. And I now remember this time to put in a question where you can make comments. So that's a wrap. See you in December.